Hi everyone, Neil here. I thought that I would make a brief video. I'll make it as brief as I can on uh, chords and uh, basically how you can discover every single chord that's possible to play on the guitar, which um, is seems like a daunting task, but if you organize it in a, in a, in a certain way, it's actually pretty simple. And um, not, all, not all the chords are going to be playable, uh, necessarily, either. But at least you'll know what they would look like on the fretboard. Um, and that's the main thing here. And, you know, the main purpose of this is a theoretical exercise, figuring out every single chord that's possible on the guitar, where it is on the guitar. And this is more of a demonstration of how to discover that. We don't have enough time to go through every single voicing on the guitar. Um, there, there are definitely many, many different voicings. And then you take that through 12 keys, it's times 12. So however many voicings there are times 12, it, you know, it's a, it's a lot, it's, there are thousands. Um, but this is really just to show how you can discover them. And this way you can discover your own voicings. And you can throw away the voicings you don't like, pretty much. Uh, or the ones that are unplayable, and keep the ones you like and see what you can do with it creatively. See if you can you can get creative with it. So, for demonstration's sake, we'll just kind of pick the key of G here. And um, I'm going to play a closed position G major 7 chord. So that's your G major 7. Um, just a forewarning, this, this little sample lesson is really more for intermediate to advanced players. So um, particularly just people, not so much players, but, but intermediate to advanced uh, musicians in general, or just people who have a, some background in music theory. Um, and uh, so if you don't have a background in music theory, I would, I would probably just stop right now because uh, some of this might not make sense to you. But I'll just try to explain as intuitively as possible. So this, this is a major seven chord, G major seven chord. Um, and it's closed position because it's within an octave. You know, that's less than, this is an octave. So it's like one note less than an octave. So it's a closed position chord. And it's a one, three, five, seven. That's how you spell the chord. For some of you, this is like really basic review, I know, but one, three, five, seven. And for those who don't understand what that means, th these are just the numbers within the major scale that, that it is one being the root of the chord, and then it's just the third note, fifth note, and seventh note. See, like if I'm doing a G major uh, scale, that's the first note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, it's a seven note scale, and those are that's just the numbers within that scale. Those are the chord tones. So with this G major scale, this, I mean, G major chord, it's G major 7 chord, I can actually get a bunch of other chords from this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, first I'm going to use a drop uh, method. So what I'm doing is um, when I'm dropping, I'll start with a drop 2 voicing. When you're dropping, when you're doing a drop 2 voicing, you're basically taking this closed voicing and you're dropping the second note from the top. So this is the top note, and this would be the second to the top. This is the fifth, one, three, five. So you drop the fifth an octave, and then keep everything else the same, and what you get is this voicing. And if you rearrange the notes, it would if you rearrange that top note to the next string, you get this. That's a drop two voicing. And um, if you drop the three, the third note from the top to get a drop three chord, what you do is one, two, three, you drop this, this note, and this happens to be the third. One, three. So you drop this, it's the third note from the top, down an octave. Keep all the other notes the same. 
and um, rearrange the notes once again on different string sets, you get this voicing basically. This is a voicing. That's a drop three voicing. Now there are three other ways that are technically possible here. Uh, three other drops that you can do. Um, drop two and three, which would be dropping the second and third second and third note from the top of the chord. So these two notes, those two notes. So drop this an octave and drop this an octave. And what you end up getting, if you do that, is this voicing. This is a drop two and three voicing with the two and the third drop. Uh, the second and the third from the top dropped. And um, drop two and four voicing. Once again, dropping the second note from the top and, but then the uh, fourth note from the top. You get this voicing. So basically to, to recap this is a drop, the drop two voicing well the closed position voicing is just this but the drop two is this drop three voicing drop two and three voicing and the drop two and four voicing. There's one other thing that's possible but um, it's, it requires double dropping the two, dropping it twice, and then dropping the third once. So dropping the second note from the top here once, then dropping it another octave. It's two octaves. And we don't have enough range on the guitar right now to do that. So for demonstration's sake, we'll just use C major for this voicing instead. I, I hope that's not confusing, but it's the same exact chord, C major 7. It's a major 7 chord. So the, dropping the two an octave, and then another octave, it would be down, way down here. And dropping the third note from the top, just one octave, it would be down here. So what you end up getting is, you keep the other, the other two voices the same, you, uh, you end up getting this type of voicing. And this is really the only way I can see to finger it, I, I'm pretty sure. And it's a cool voicing. It's not quite as practical as other voicings because it's really spread out, but that would be the double drop two and three voicing. So all in all, what we got was we got, um, we basically got one voicing with that, just in that closed voicing. We got a second voicing with the drop two voicing. I'm sorry, the drop two would be this one. <laughs> third voicing and the drop three voicing. So that's the third voicing we have for just this major seven chord. And then the uh, the fourth voicing was this. Uh, well, I guess in the order that we're doing things, the fourth voicing was this voicing, drop two and three, and then drop two and four was the, four the fifth voicing, sorry. And then the sixth voicing was a double drop two and three, which once again in this range of the guitar is impossible because I have a low E. I don't go all the way down to, I'm not in drop D. I'm not super metal or whatever, you know. Uh, but, sorry, metal guitarist, but I'm definitely not a metal guitarist, so I don't really, um, not, I'm not into sludge metal and all that stuff, um, you know. But uh, anyways, yeah. So, um, basically, we have six voicings, just for that, and that's just for this one inversion. Now, if you inverted this, this major seven voicing, you, you get three inversions, and they're not really all that playable. You get this first inversion. This is when you just, you're raising the bottom note up an octave now, uh, basically. Um, the way I view it is you're just kind of moving up the scale to the next available chord tone, like moving this from the root to the third, moving this from the third to the uh, fifth, moving this from the fifth to the seventh, moving this from the seventh to the root. But basically you end up getting, this is a first inversion. Um, it's extremely unplayable. I mean, that's ridiculous. I can't even really play it.
And then this, the second version, doing that once again, you get this. And then the third version, you get this voicing. Um, you can see I had to adjust my hands just to play those. Um, but if you do, for each of those three inversions, if you do what we just did, you get basically three times six. You get six voicings for each of those overall. So you get 18 other voicings. So combined with the voicings that we just did, basically, theoretically, what you have possible are 24 voicings just for a basic major seven chord. Now, if you do that for all the chords in that major scale, if you do it for, um, for instance, if you don't, not just doing it for this, but doing it for a um, minor seven chord, for instance, uh, or, you know, go, let's go up the scale a little more. That dominant chord. Um, dominant seven chord. Do, and you can do it for, uh, basically, you, you have these, uh, in the major scale, you have the, on top of the major seven chords, you have the minor seven, the, uh, um, dominant seven, and then you have minor seven, flat five, or what some people call half diminished. If you do that for each of those three chord qualities, what we just did, you get 24 voicings for each of those as well. So what you end up having is in the major scale, you have, um, just multiply 24 times four. And what does that come out to? Like, I guess 96, um, you have 96 possible voicings. Um, in the major scale. And that's just in the major scale. If you apply that to other scales as well, like the harmonic major, harmonic minor, and melodic minor scales, which I don't have time to go into all that right now, then you get a bunch of other voicings as well that are distinct. And uh, this is just for basic seven chords too. So for each of these chord qualities, what you want to do is you want to go through a few other basic voicings. Like say just sticking that major seven chord, for instance, uh, there are four other ways that you can voice this. You can basically four other distinct voicings. You have you can raise the fourth. And um, so that's a one, four, five, seven. Um, that's one. You can raise the sixth, which would be a one, three, six, seven. Um, you can do both. You can raise a six. Well, you can raise a sixth, and you can drop the uh, um, the third to a second. You have one, two, six, seven. And then finally, you can just drop the third, which is a one, two, five, seven chord. So those are five different distinct voicings uh, that you also can can take through all those inversions that I just showed and the drop voicings, and uh, for each one of them, and uh, and you can do that. Uh, through each chord quality too, not just for major seven. Um, and so actually that's how you get every single chord technically in the major scale. And you just apply that to every other scale that there is, every other major, you know, every other significant scale that there is, um, at the very least with uh, harmonic major, harmonic minor, and melodic minor. And you end up having basically every single tonal chord that's possible. Uh, every single distinct voicing that's possible to play. And um, and I say that because they are distinct. It is every single distinct voicing that's possible. It's not just on the guitar. Because really, um, for instance, I, I didn't do drop four chords. You probably noticed that. I didn't like drop the, in this G major seven chord, I didn't just drop the fourth note from the top, which is the root, down an octave. Because that's not really a distinct voicing. You can see this is still one, you spell this one, three, five, seven, just like you spelled this one, three, five, seven. So you're spelling it the same way, and I'm, so I don't, I'm not really counting that as a, as a distinct voicing. Um, 
but basically you have you would have every single distinct voicing that's possible and um, once you know all those voicings basically it's up to you how you use them you can you know which ones are playable for you of course as well but um, you you can you basically have every single possibility in a for a four note chord every single possibility which I think is really cool and um, you don't want to just stop there with the theoretical exercise but you want to figure out how you're going to use it after that but I just think it's kind of cool that you can basically figure out every single creative possibility that there is for four note chords and then you can kind of figure out what you're going to do with it aesthetically which is a whole other thing um, but that's kind of the cool thing about it so hopefully this can help if you're a musician and you're a relatively dedicated musician like I am um, hopefully you found this helpful and you can um, take it into whatever direction you want to, you know. Because really that's all that this is about. It's just about facilitating creativity. So anyways, um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked what you saw, sorry this turned out to be a longer video than I thought it would. But if you liked what you saw, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and I'll try to keep updating every once in a while. Thanks. Bye.